Hi, it's the end of the day, so how about we have a look at a data structure in Dart called Q. Q is a data structure that allows us easily to add something at the beginning and at the end of it. So it might be helpful for implementing things like first come first served or last first come last served, things like that. So FIFO, LIFO and so on. And also a stack. We don't have an implementation of stack in that, but we can pretty easily use Q for it. So here in the documentation, a Q is defined as a collection that can be manipulated at both ends. And now important thing is that Q is actually an interface. And this interface is implemented by two different queues. So we have a double linked queue and we have the list queue. We have a couple of different properties on it. So there are ways to add elements like we have add, we can add all where we can just give it an iterable, for example, a list. We can add some add first to add something at the beginning, at last to add something at the end. And then we also have a couple of other mm, hand, handy methods like for example, finding an element at a specified index or here we have every, which gets a function that is a test. And then in every element passes this test, we get true, otherwise we get false. We can expand the list, we can fold over here. We have for each on it, we have join. So we can just join it into a string with some separator. Lots of really handy methods here. That is coming from the iterable interface. If we have a look over here, then you can see this interface defines all of these handy methods. Here at Stack Overflow, there is a very good question because as you've seen, there are two different queues available in Dart. So there is the double linked queue and there is the list queue. And the answer here to this question is basically that the double linked queue is implemented on a double linked list. Every element of a list has a reference to the previous and to the next element. And the list queue is just implemented on top of a list. So inside in the implementation, we will see that in a moment, we just have a list over there. And then this answer also here explains that most of the time you are using list queue. And actually the queue interface, if you, if you use the queue itself, it will also actually be a list queue and not a double linked queue. The interesting thing here is written, I don't know if it's true, but um, it also says that since we already had, so the double linked queue was before, and then the list queue was added, but before the link, double linked queue was already there, so they kept it. Let's jump to that part. I've just typed in a little bit of an example of a queue. So we can define a queue like this, where we are giving it a type, in my case, integer. And then we can add all, we can add the list of elements. We can add first, we can add last element, and we can print the queue. If we run it again, you can see we have our one, two, three, then I added four at the beginning and fifth at the end. And then we can use this handy methods as well to do a test on every, here I'm checking if every item is equals to three, which of course it's not, so we get false. I can change it, for example, to check whether every item is smaller than 100. And here we have also the join function where I'm just joining everything with this minus. Let's run it. Let's see if that test will be now true. True, because every element in my list is smaller than 100. So this is how we can use a queue. So we can have this double linked queue instead here. Now everything runs exactly the same because the internal implementation is different. But other than that, nothing changes because it's still an implementation of the queue interface. And since we don't have a stack implemented in Dart, then we can try to do it ourselves right now. So we can have a stack. Now internally it will have some queues, so final queue. Let's make it of a type int right now here, but of course this stack we could have a generic and just do it whatever type. So okay, of a type. Let's create the queue. Let's give it type of t. And then for example, we can have a void push stack is first in first out. So if we add something on top of a stack, and then if we can take something out from top of the stack. So here we can call our queue 
that adds, adds to first. It doesn't matter if you use the beginning of the, or the end of the queue over here. Let's just add t. And then we will have our method t pop to get return queue. And we have to return the first. Remove this element, so let's just skip it. Then we can, and it's of course it's start final not val. <laughs> then we can call q dot remove first, and finally we can return first. And here we have a very simple stack implementation. If we use that. So let's say we have a stack of type int, let's say stack push 3, stack push 2, and stack push 5. Then we can see what do we get if we do pop. And uh, let's just pop all three elements that we added and let's see if this actually works. And there we go. So first we pushed three, then two, then five, and when we pop, then we get first five, then three, two, and then three, so in reverse order. And here is our stack implementation with a queue. The next step, let's have a look at the implementation of this whole thing. So here we have this SDK is the KDIP collections queue in the collections library. And on the top we have this abstract class queue. And you can see over here we have a factory constructor which returns a list queue. So if you are using like over here um, queue instead of the double linked queue, then it's exactly the same like if you would actually instantiate here list queue. So there we go. Then we have also some a couple of other factory constructors for queue of um, some elements and we can cast from as well. And basically it defines now all the methods that a queue should have. So yeah, we have the add first, add last, add remove, add all, remove where and so on. So down here, um, let's find maybe this double linked queue definition maybe here okay so you can see that this double linked queue it's implementing the queue interface hence it will have all of these methods that we've seen that we've seen defined above and it also extends iterable so you can do for each and other stuff on it like on any other iterable and here it has this sential sential i have no idea how to pronounce this and this thing is like an element of a queue. So if we can try to find now this element of the queue somewhere, where is it defined here? You can see this extends some double linked queue entry right now. And you can see that it's setting some previous link and next link to this. So to itself right at the very beginning, because at the very beginning, there is only one element. Um, but if we find the definition now of the entry, here we go. There is the previous link and next link. So a uh, double linked li list in this case, uh, a queue, it's just a queue of elements that are linked by reference one to another. So it's like a linked list, nothing else than that. And now let's try to find the list queue. There we go. That No, that's a queue. Can we? There it is. So here is the list queue class, which again, it extends a list iterable this time and it implements queue. So list iterable, of course, is also an iterable in the end. And now inside, what we can see is that we have this list of type A, so this generic type, which is a table. And we also keep a head and tail over here and we also have some modification counts, stuff like that. But the most important thing is that this queue is implemented based on a list. So now let's quickly go back to double linked queue 
and here. Yeah, and if we have a look how this thing is implemented, so yeah, we have this element that we looked into before and it also keeps elements count. So that is this cached over here, so we don't have to go through it and count probably. And then we have all the methods also implemented. So for example, for at first, we are calling on the essential append and we give it a new value. So then the new node is appended and we are incrementing the counter. If we look at the remove method, then we are just decrementing this counter in every and each of them. Okay, cool. So if you're interested, then you can have a look how things are actually implemented here inside a little more in depth, but that's basically all about queues in Dart. I think at other video, we may also have a look at other data structures that we have, like for example, this very strange looking splay tree map or what is splay? To be honest, I have no idea at this point. So definitely that's a topic for next video. For now, it's wow, it's over 10 p.m. So bye bye.